I want to be on the One of Darby's favorite songs. I'm not sure that I'm as excited, but this is Chris Mendenhall sitting in for Darby Noakes. And uh, when we walked in, it was uh, interesting. One of the people at the radio station said, looked at uh, Dave and I, and they're very disappointed that Darby wasn't here. <laughs> when we were concerned, I said, hey, it's radio. Nobody can see us. Don't worry about it. So, <laughs> but uh, She's definitely better looking than you, Chris. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no question. Uh, but anyway, we uh, Dave and I... Uh, I've known each other, like I said, for many years, and Dave actually got me into real estate almost 27 years ago next month. And when I came into the real estate, uh, a purchase agreement was just a one-page document, if you can believe that. And, I, and it may have been legal length. It may not have been, but it was just one page. And I remember the uproar, the Board of Realtors, that when they went to a four-page document and, and then agency disclosure, and oh, man, they, I mean, it was like these people were so angry. You know, why do we have to complicate it? But, uh, but not only that, Chris, back then we didn't use a standardized form. Almost every brokerage had their own own, own forms that you used to make oh, a that's right. purchase contract. I now, remember that now. Now, now when, you know, through California Association of Realtors, pretty much the state uses all the standardized forms, even though they there's a lot more of them. But be, it used to every, you know, we had to look at a Century 21 or Remax forms. Their purchase contracts were, all, di that. were all, all different. And, you, and, and their listing agreements were all different. Right. So all the forms were different. Now the industry has been standardized a real lot. I didn't, you know, people don't realize the, the legal aspect of what a realtor does. It, it really is almost a paralegal function. It's not like, um, you know, buying or selling cars. I mean, although I've seen, I mean, the, 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 the finance thing you sign for a car dealership is the longest piece of paper I've ever seen. <laughs> but... Uh, but really, I mean, I, I feel like there's so much l legal to really ha get your head around as a realtor and and be responsible to your client for. How, I mean, what do you do with, I mean, you have, you know, 70, 80 agents working for you. They're all performing a paralegal function. How do you, what, what do you do or what do you? Uh, well, for, well, first of all, make sure they get the right training, okay, and, and make sure that they understand the form so that they can communicate that to the consumer and the clients out there. So that becomes incredibly important so that they understand them and it takes some time. And if people would actually read the contracts, to be, tell you the truth, I've never read the financial contracts when I bought a car. What? Nope, I've never done that. <laughs> I can, it's just a fine print, I can't read it. But I, I just, what's the interest rate, what's this? Okay, good, what's my payment? Okay, I'm fine, you know? And that's, but, but buying a house, there's so many things. This is a house, you know, you're, you know that you're gonna live in and stuff. There's, there become a lot more consumer protections. But most of, the, most of the agreements, like you said, have been prepared and standardized by the California Association of Realtors. Those are all really the result of some litigation. Absolutely. Every document, and, there, and you said it was like a phone book now. It used to be 15 pages back in the day, but now it's just all these disclosures of, you know, would it be lead-based paint or... Uh, Radon gas, you know, buyer-seller. You know, advisories, new you know, probate advisories, you know, short trust, sale advisory, yeah, trust, trust advisory. Every, every everything has advisory that we, we, you don't have to disclose this on this. You know, in certain houses, we don't have to disclose this. If, if it's a probate, we don't have to do it. A transfer disclosure statement. You know, if it's an REO, we don't have to do those either. So th there's a lot of you know, certain forms are exempt from certain transactions, and I wanted to maybe bring up that term, term fiduciary responsibility. That's great. Okay, and, and, and I think this is where, you know, we are moving to, and part of our, our way we bundle this program, we were doing the buyer-broker agreements. Oh, really? Yeah, and the buyer-broker agreements, people, and in, in some ways we're seeing a lot more of those because it really, a buyer-broker agreement where you ha have a buyer-broker agreement, it actually changes the relationship that the agent and the broker has with the with the, with the potential buyer and one is we're trying to sell if we don't have one we're just trying to sell them something but when we have a buyer broker agreement the relation changes that as a fiduciary relationship that we now represent them wow and and that representation versus trying to sell them can make a huge difference in the not only the property they buy but the price they get for the property so if I had a, a buyer broker agreement and I signed it and you found a great house and you had two other clients would you would I have a better chance of getting you to 
I mean, would I have a better chance of getting the house if I was under an agreement with you? Oh, absolutely. Because once you sign a buyer broker agreement, it's, it doesn't obligate them to buy a house, but it basically says, hey, we're in partners together to buy to buy this house, and I have to treat this as my own. And and, and a lot of times where somebody will call you off a or walk into an open house, if I don't sell them this house, they're going to go work with another broker. And unfortunately, a lot of people think that they should work with two or three real estate agents. But the best deals and the best values many times are found because somebody is um, work with somebody. Let me give you an example. Sure. Okay. And I know I always like to tell stories. I have an agent in my San Diego office. And I, I go, and, and she goes, well... This person signed the buyer broker agreement. I go, great. Well, she went and knocked on doors in a certain neighborhood. She ran down all the notices of the fall. I go, well, what type of, oh, my client. So they got a property, $100,000 below market. I go, and why would you do all those extra things for them to find them that super deal? Well, I knew they were going to buy and they were going to work with me. I go, that's my point exactly. If you know they're going to buy, you will find that great deal for them. Really? You're going to find, you go the extra step for them. But if you're just, hey, if they don't buy this, I'm on to the next. It, it's it's a difference of beginning full service real estate and really looking out to the best interest of your clients and not. And so this is a true fact that buyers through the National Association of Realtors, they said that buyers that sign a buyer broker agreement save on an average of 3 to 5% on their home purchase. On a five hundred thousand dollar house, that's a lot of money. Exactly, wow. and, and and you know what? And that's what I, I say when I make the case in point. What type of deal did your buyers do? Oh, they got an incredible deal. That's but, right. But but I, from my personal experience, that's probably the exception, not the rule. So that that's what you work on at Pacific Shores Real Estate Inc. is is to get your clients, you know, to make that that connection, that agreement, so that you can better serve them. Oh, absolutely. And, and first of all, it's going to it's going to help them tremendously, not just in the purchase price, but in the cost that they save in purchasing that home. So, I mean, I could tell you, without going into detail, we could tell them about a half a dozen ways that they're going to save a substantial amount of money on their home purchase. That sounds great, Dave. Your number, again, was uh, toll-free, 888-308-6979. We have some more information from Dave. We're going to... Cry at them after the break. You're listening to your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS.